Good evening, everyone. I'm Cindy Silva, and I have the distinction this year of serving as the mayor of the city of Walnut Creek. And it is truly my honor and pleasure to be here tonight to celebrate and honor the concert band's longtime musical director and conductor, Harvey Benstein. And Harvey, if you would please join me. You know, Harvey, once I learned that you were retiring, after I said no, and I thought I had the power to say no, but it turns out I don't, then I just continued to think about you a lot and how we've worked together over the last 16 years. I thought about the many concerts you've conducted on this very lesser stage and the number of times you've, I've been able to attend, and thank you so much for great entertainment. And I thought about the summertime concerts that you help put on at Civic Park. I thought about your contribution to helping the city produce each year memorable Memorial Day and Veterans Day ceremonies. We couldn't done it, we can't do it without you and the band, and now your successor, just, who I just met, he now knows that he has to work with us on Memorial Day and Veterans Day. <laughs> I was reminded that you've traveled the United States as a guest conductor and clinician for professional collegiate, student, and amateur ensembles. Do you have a lot of miles you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> and I truly chuckled when I think back on how you were able to do even the most tone-deaf and rhythm-challenged person into a great guest conductor, including any number of Walnut Creek mayors <laughs> at the 4th of July in Civic Park. So Harvey, it is my honor this evening to commemorate your decades of service to music, to our youth, and to our community with this proclamation, and to thank you for your lasting contribution to our music legacy, and that I assure you that whenever I hear Seuss's Stars and Stripes Forever, I will smile and think of you. Thank you so much, and you will be truly missed. Thanks, Cindy. And my apologies to the band, and the, but I will be returning to the city council chambers because we're in the middle of a meeting. Take care. <laughs>
Good evening. Thank you all for being here tonight to uh, weather the storm and join us. Uh, great to see you. Um, our next piece, One Life Beautiful, was uh, commissioned by a good friend and colleague, Ray Kramer, who was uh, the uh, director of bands. He's director of bands emeritus now at Indiana University. Uh, in, 20, in 2007, um, Ray's daughter was out riding her bicycle for exercise and uh, was uh, hit and run by a car and she passed away. And uh, she was 42 years old. Um, and Ray uh, contacted our good friend, Julie Giroux, uh, who's one of the prominent composers in all media, but particularly for, uh, for bands, told his story and Julie wrote this. And then, uh, as your program indicated, um, we felt a similar tragedy uh, last December, I think it was 22nd, uh, we got a phone call that our, our dear friend, our colleague, one of our lead trumpet players, our business, no, our uh, personnel manager, uh, were a member of our board, uh, one of the bright lights of the Walnut Creek Concert Band passed away at uh, 40 years old while golfing with, um, while bowling with his family. And so the two mixtures of the tragedy uh, that this piece I don't want to say celebrates, but it, it pays tribute to One Life Beautiful. And uh, I certainly feel that John Reynolds, who we all loved and was loved by many people, uh, was One Life Beautiful. Um, so there's going to be a couple more talks before we go into that. But right now, I'll turn it over to our board president and principal uh, flutist, Sarah Stafford. At John's service, this poem was read by his cousin. When Tomorrow Starts Without Me by David M. Romano. When tomorrow starts without me and I'm not here to see if the sun should rise and find your eyes all filled with tears for me, I know how much you love me as much as I love you. And each time you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that Jesus came and called my name and took me by the hand. He said, my place is ready in heaven far above, and that I have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But as I turned to walk away, a tear fell from my eye. For all my life, I'd always thought it wasn't my time to die. I had so much to live for and so much yet to do. It seems almost impossible that I was leaving you. I thought of all the yesterdays, the good ones and the bad. I thought of all the love we shared and all the fun we had. If I could have stayed for just a little while, I'd say goodbye and kiss you and maybe see your smile. But then I fully realized that this could never be, for emptiness and memories would take the place of me. And when I thought of worldly things that I'd miss come tomorrow, I thought of you. And when I did, my heart was filled with sorrow. But when I walked through heaven's gate and felt so much at home, as God looked down and smiled at me from his great golden throne, he said, this is eternity and all I've promised you. Today, your life on earth is past, but here it starts anew. John was an incredibly, incredibly special member of our band, always, always had a smile and such a joy to have in the ensemble and a good friend. I would like to invite his mom and father up, please, for a special presentation for our conductors. We will greatly miss John and value everything that he was. He was pure light and pure joy. Chris and Celia Reynolds would like to present Harvey and Matt with a special gift. Ooh, that's a hard one. Well, thank you all for coming and to uh, 
send Mr. Benstein off with a farewell. His music has just been outstanding. <laughs> um, when John went to San Jose State, he had a conducting, one of his classes was a conducting class. And when we were going through his things, we found his conducting batons. So tonight, we'd like to present Harvey, let him choose which baton he'd like to keep for his all his years that he's helped John with his music. So if you'd like to choose one. <laughs> Too short, too short. Is that okay? And then Matt, who is taking over for Harvey? Plus, you get to keep the case. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Carry on. Thank you so much. I very much appreciate it. Love you, trumpets. <laughs> okay, we love the clarinet too. <laughs> Actually, we love the whole. Uh, you say something. You guys meant a lot to John. He came back. He played with his heart because he truly enjoyed being here. And you guys are the best. Thank you. Love you. Thank you. We love you.
Now it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage the next music conductor and uh, music director and conductor of the Walnut Creek Concert Band starting tomorrow, <laughs> Matthew Sadowski.
Hi again, Sarah Stafford. President, and in honor of the past, the present, and the future, thank you to Harvey Benstein for all you've done for the Walnut Creek Concert Band. Our sincere condolences in missing John Reynolds, a wonderful musician and such a special person, and welcome to Matt Sadowski and the future. And to our continuing band members in the community, Lauren K. Fetz, fluid, flutist, former president and current board member, and his wife, Pat Pinnell, will match contributions of $100 or more tonight and through March 30th, first, excuse me, up to a maximum of $5,000. Remember that envelope I always talk about, that envelope of opportunity? In your program, this is your chance. Double your effective support of our treasured institution and honor all who are present with us and in our thoughts tonight. Please stand, Lauren and Pat. Give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. These contributions, of course, go towards um, maintaining our band, our library, commissions. It just means so much to us, anything that you can give and help continue this great tradition of the Walnut Creek Concert Band. Thank you so much. And a special presentation from Dave Sandusky for our honored conductor. Come on out, Harvey. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dave Sandusky, and uh, for the pa better part of the past 23 years, I've been uh, able to enjoy being in the clarinet section for the Walnut Creek Concert Band, and 18 of them as the section leader. Um, unfortunately, two years ago, I moved to Marin County and was able, you know, making the 50 mile and one way commute is a little tough. So, however, when we did get wind of Harvey going to retire this year, this uh, put into two things into motion for me personally. First of all, I knew I had to play the last concert with him, so, you know, here I am sitting in here in the clarinet section again. Um, and the other is, I had thought about doing what I did about 10 years ago, believe it or not, and um, so one of the things I do besides play music is I'm an amateur woodworker, and um, so Harvey, this, this is not a giant bottle of Crown Royal, unfortunately. <laughs> But this is a little something I manufactured with about 30 hours of work. Um, it says on here, this uh, lovely case my wife Michelle made, it says Walnut Creek Concert Band, Maestro Harvey Benstein, 25 years of excellence. And inside is something that um, is a, not a replica, it's not the right word, but a similar idea from something my great grandfather had. And, um, it's a little difficult to get out of this case, I will say. It's very snug fit, very sexy. Okay, but we gotta... Okay, you take the... the... This is an Aeolian harp. Um, it is made out of walnut. It's got Harvey's initials, especially on the front here. Uh, there is an inscription inside. You have to read through the F holes at some point. Um, but the idea is you put this in a window, put the window sill down on it, either horizontally or vertically, and the wind will blow through it and uh, rustle the strings, if you will. Um, it's like, it's got six strings on the inside of it. I have to put this down to do this. So this is, it looks kind of like a you know, guitar or something like that. And these are indeed guitar strings on it. And it's not necessarily tuned to anything. But that's okay because it doesn't play the fundamental pitches with the wind. It's some amazing, you know, harmonic that sounds very ethereal and very strange. So I'll let you play with it. Um, in the back of the, uh, <laughs> the end of the case there, there's a little pocket that has a, like a kind of like a clock key that you can use to fiddle with the pegs and um, ch change the tuning as you see fit. So this is my gift to you so that you will always remember the Walnut Creek Concert Band and us and, and me specifically. So. <laughs> Thank you. 
So what's a band concert without Sousa, right? Yeah, that's fun, yeah. So band classics. When I put the program together, um, I did my usual over-programming, and, <laughs> and I wasn't looking not necessarily for a particular tune, but the composers represented tonight um, represented help pave the way and have continued to push forward the repertoire for the modern wind band. So from way back from the host to uh, more contemporary pieces like the One Life Beautiful and uh, Walnut Creek Concert Band has always kind of been on the forefront of trying uh, new works. We have uh, Composure Circle in our donations. We've uh, had numerous um, pieces that we have commissioned and been part of consortiums that we've provided for you, West Coast premieres and so forth. The first piece we did under my tenure uh, was uh, the next piece we're going to do and I thought it would be appropriate. My last concert, I should do this piece by my dear friend Keith Gates. Keith, Keith and I uh, were uh, colleagues when I was working at McNeese State University in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And um, very close, wonderful musician, a Juilliard graduate, oh, William Schumann, Juilliard. He was a dean at Juilliard. Keith Gate went to Juilliard. Some connections, they weren't close friends, but you, you could tell the influence from Schumann uh, would have been for Keith Gates. That's how my mind works when I'm programming you know, these little connections. Anyhow, this is our first commissioned work that we did, uh, commissioned it in uh, the year 2000. Unfortunately, Keith was taken from us way too young by cancer, but he lives on in his music, and it's my pleasure to play Concert Overture, which was written for the Walnut Creek Concert Band by Keith Gates.
I promise my next concert that I do won't be so long. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, so, about a, six weeks ago, my dear friend, Bob Halseth, there he is, and Helen, we, we met up in L.A. and we went to um, Frank to Kelly's retirement celebration concert. And it was amazing. And he conducted and uh, a couple of his great pieces and uh, his associate there at uh, USC conducted and another dear friend, Carl St. Clair, uh, conducted. Uh, it was just brilliant. And, you know, Frank has been such a leader in all genres of, of music, but it's a leader, an example for future composers uh, all around the world. And one of the most moving things, not one, one of the moving things that he wrote came from a commission by Alan McMurray, a friend of ours, uh, who was at University of Colorado following Columbine. He called on his friend, uh, Frank. Now, the friend thing. Okay, so I was teaching in Ann Arbor at that time, uh, and Carl Sink, director at the University of Michigan, and Frank to Kelly was uh, studying, coming over and studying at the University of Michigan, and Alan McMurray had just left from being on the faculty at the University of Michigan. Isn't that amazing? And while we're talking about Michigan, there's a student of mine from Grand Ledge High School some 43, 44 years ago. I guess what I'm saying, it's a really small world and the coincidences are just amazing. Anyhow, um, this wonderful emotional work, um, American Elegy as a result of Frank's, um, from Frank's commission, commission to Frank to commemorate that horrific event in Columbine. Unfortunately, some people don't listen to music because these things keep occurring. And just as we were getting uh, to rehearse this piece, that is another coincidence. I just thought you're going to be here for a long time in here. You want to make sure the rain's done so you can get home safely. But just before we're going to get, uh, start rehearsing this, um, a couple days before the horrific shooting occurred at Michigan State University. And what most of you don't know is that both Matt Sadowski and I are graduates from Michigan State University. So it was playing this, and the band played it so heartfelt. And from Frank, who did some graduate work at the, univer at, at the uh, University of Michigan, and then commemorating those losses. So uh, enjoy this beautiful music and maybe uh, think about those souls, and maybe we can not have another violent attack.
I didn't warn him, that's why I'm giving him the look. So it's a super special night for us. Um, I, I wanted to remind the band and maybe Harvey of some of his uh, long-standing rules. <laughs> so the top five, I don't know that everyone knows this. Well, we've, we've heard it. We didn't, I don't think everyone knew that there's actually numbers and it's, it, it was printed, it was typed up and everything, not even by me. So um, Karen Ashford sent this through Josie, yep. Uh, number one, the conductor is always right. <laughs> number two, do no harm. Number three, practice is not a sign of weakness. I just looked at one of my students. <laughs> Four, always have the sound in your head before you begin playing. And five, keep the instruments up after the last note until the conductor shows it. There's a whole list about tuning, dynamics, rhythm, where we play the, come on, the rest. <laughs> we play the rest. We don't rush the notes right before the rest. A dot, a quarter, and eighth equals the eighth belongs to the next note. Duple versus simple expression. Pay attention to the note and phrase endings. All sorts of wonderful rules. Number 22. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Harvey, it is with mixed emotions that we gather here today to bid adieu to a cherished member of our community band family. After 25 years of dedicated service, our beloved music director is retiring. As we reflect on the impact that Harvey has had on our community, it's hard not to feel a sense of loss. He's been a guiding force for countless musicians throughout the years, sharing his love of music, inspiring others to pursue their own musical dreams. Over the course of his career, Harvey has done so much to shape the culture of our band. He's brought a wealth of knowledge and expertise to every rehearsal and performance, always pushing us to be our best, encouraging us to take risks and dance on our seats. He's created rich opportunities for our musicians through composition commissions, solo works, brought in fabulous guest artists, and kept the shit ship. <laughs> uh, I really did not mean that. <laughs> kept the ship afloat in troubled waters. <laughs> Uh, wow, and that was recorded. <laughs> Whew, okay, Harvey's passion for music is infectious, and he's instilled the same love and excitement in all of us. Whether we're playing classical pieces or more contemporary arrangements, he has always challenged us to embrace new sounds and techniques and to push the boundaries of what we thought was possible. As we say goodbye to Harvey, we know that he will always hold a special place in our hearts. His legacy will live on in the music that we make and the memories that we share, and we are forever, forever grateful for the time we've had together. On behalf of the entire community band, I would like to express our heartfelt thanks to Harvey for his years of service and dedication. You truly have made a difference in the lives of so many, and your contributions will never be forgotten. We wish you all the best in your retirement, and we know and hope that you know how much you mean to us. We will miss you dearly, but we take comfort in knowing that your influence will continue to be felt for years to come. Thank you, Harvey. Just a little token of our appreciation in the Walnut Creek Concert Band colors, just for you. <laughs> Clarinet's my instrument too, so. Sorry to drag this out for you, but. Uh... I mean, the, the way they displayed that piece from the heart. Um, that's my musical family. And uh, we've been through a lot together. And like families, you know, there's... And then there's... But there's always the love, always the respect, and always the caring for each other. Um, 
story that many of you don't know, and since I won't be in front of a microphone anymore, um, she won't have to worry about this ever happening again. But I met my wife when I took over the band. There, there was this flutist sitting there in front of me. And I just, I met my wife at, in this band. And um, we were married in Civic Park in the gazebo where the band plays a summer concert. And we were married by the mayor of Walnut Creek. So we have a, a real connection uh, to the Walnut Creek Band. couple other connections I'd, I'd like to share with you because it's a once-in-a-lifetime event. My brother Joe from Northville, Michigan flew in for this. Joe, where are you? There he is. And my eldest son from the Dallas, Texas area, David. So, not only having the support from my musical family, but having the support from my real family uh, has been, been wonderful, so thank you. Uh, one more little family twist here, kind of family. Last piece, Alfred Reed, uh, written for Harry Bijan. Harry Bijan was uh, my college band director, and uh, we were very close. He took me under his wing when I was young, and uh, I worked for him, and he mentored me, and got me on the road to where I am now. So thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for 25 years of support, whether it's in the lecture, whether it's uh, over at Civic Park. Uh, appreciate you. Keep supporting the Walnut Creek Band. Keep my live music making alive. Keep the concert band alive in this community. And thank you all.